A tool you'll likely use in the shop is the miter saw. The miter saw gets its name because it's commonly used by carpenters when cutting trim to make a specific type of cut called a miter cut. A miter cut is an angled cut that's cut across the face of a board. Another type of angled cut that the miter saw will cut is a bevel cut. And this is an angled cut cut across the edge of a board. The miter saw is also capable of making both types of cuts simultaneously. This is referred to as a compound miter cut. However, in this class, you'll likely be limited to making simply what's referred to as a cross cut. You'll use a cross cut when you need to cut your board to length if you have a longer board, or possibly if you have individual pieces laid out onto your board and you need to cut the board to separate those individual pieces. To make what's referred to as a cross cut, this is a cut that's been made across the grain of a board, usually across the length of a board. If you take a look at the actual board, you can see that there's this grain pattern on the board or these lines that run along the length of the board. Anytime you cut across these lines, this is referred to as a cross cut. An opposite type of cut to this, a cut that's not safe to make on the miter saw, is a rip cut. A rip cut is a cut that is made along the grain of the board or usually down the length of a board. In either case, this is not a safe cut to make on the miter saw. Now that we know what types of cuts the miter saw can make and what types of cuts you'll use the miter saw to make, let's talk about the miter saw itself. Most likely when you come to the miter saw, you'll see that it's in the lockdown position. It's put in that position when the saw is moved and it's frequently left in that position to help prevent people from getting injured in case the saw is accidentally engaged. In order to use the saw, you will need to release it from this position. To do that, you'll need to release the locking pin, which is at the back of the saw, a little bit below and behind where the motor is. In order to release that pin, you'll need to put a little bit of pressure down on the handle. Continue to hold pressure down on the handle while you release the pin so that the saw doesn't spring up and jar around on you. Mentioning the handle, there's an additional part of the handle, the trigger. If you pull that trigger, it will engage the saw. And I'll show you here what that's like. You want to be aware of that so you don't accidentally engage it. Also, as you move the handle up and down, you'll see that there's this plastic cover, this guard, that also moves up and down. It does that to help conceal as much of the blade as possible to help prevent you from accidentally coming in contact with the blade. If you take a look at the blade, you'll see that there's a cross-cutting blade on the saw, a blade that has several small teeth spaced very close together. The blade, when it's engaged, spins in this direction, causing the sawdust to be ejected out toward the back of the saw. If you took a look at the back of the saw, you'll see that there's this black bag that's used for collecting the dust that's ejected out toward the back. It will not collect all of the dust, and you will need to clean up the area around the saw with the shop vac when you're done making your cuts. This lower portion of the saw is referred to as the table. Use the table to hold your stock or your wood flat while you make your cuts. Toward the back of the table is a fence. The fence is used to hold your wood still so it doesn't move while you make your cut. If the board moves while you make the cut, you risk getting something referred to as a kickback, which is very dangerous. You also risk having an inaccurate cut, also undesirable. There's some additional settings you'll want to check out about the saw before you make your cut. There is the miter adjustment, which is right here. You'll want to check to see that that is set to zero for making a square cut or a cut that's at a 90 degree angle. There's also the bevel adjustment. The gauge for that is toward the back of the saw. You'll want to check to see that that is set to zero. If either of those aren't set properly or if you think you need to adjust those, see me so I can help you and make sure that you're going to be making a safe cut and an accurate cut. 
Now that we've talked about the different parts of the saw and the different features, let's talk about how to use the saw safely. In order to use the miter saw safely, you'll want to take some things into consideration. You'll want to make sure that you're wearing safety glasses. They should be glasses that are impact resistant and also have side shields. This will prevent any sawdust that comes your way from getting in your eye. You'll want to make sure that your board is set up so that it can lay flat on the table and tight to the fence. And if you have a longer board, you'll also need to make sure that it's supported so that it doesn't end up tipping on you when you make your cut. You may need to use some books stacked up on the table to help support the board. When you position your hand to hold the wood down, make sure that your hand is at least six inches away from the blade to be a safe distance. And also make sure that no other part of your body is in line with the blade. You definitely want to make sure that you wouldn't have your hand someplace where you could accidentally bring the blade down and cut it. You will want to bring the blade down before you engage the saw to make sure that the blade is lined up with your mark that you've set for cutting your board. Make sure that the blade is on the waist side of your board or the side that's going to end up being scrap or cut off. Before you bring the blade down to engage the blade, make sure that the blade is not in contact with the wood. That can also cause a kickback, which is very dangerous and undesirable. Once you've engaged the blade, bring the blade all the way down, cutting through the board. You will have an issue if you try cutting a board that's wider than 8 inches or so wide. Once you've cut all the way through the board, Release the trigger, continue to hold the handle down until the blade has come to a complete stop. This will prevent any small pieces that have been cut off from going flying off into the distance. Once the blade stops, release the handle, let it come all the way up, and you should have a nice clean square cut. Next I'd like to show you what it looks like to use the saw and make that cut. <laughs> 